create a new hydraulic model. When you're asked to track changes, go ahead and say yes. Okay, the first thing we'll do is make sure we are working in US units. So we'll reset our defaults to US units. Now we're going to save as scaled network. Okay, now we're going to give this file some information. Okay, and we're ready to lay out our network. First thing we'll do is we're going to make sure that we're using Hayes and Williams for our friction method. Okay, next we're going to set our prototypes. So we'll go to view prototypes and we'll create a pipe prototype. So we'll make sure all our pipes will be six inch diameter. And PVC, make sure Hayes and Williams coefficient is 150 and it would show the same here. This means that all the pipes that I lay out from here on will have those characteristics. Let's uh, bring a background for reference. So browse to the location where you have your file and open it. Leave everything as default and click OK. We're going to zoom. OK, go ahead and save. And now we're going to make sure that we have the correct size for our labels. So we'll go to our drawing and set these multipliers to 5 and 10. Click OK. And make sure that you go over here and, and you're using CAD style. If you're going to use GIS style, you don't need those multipliers. All right, now we're ready to lay out our network. So we'll go to Home, click on Layout. And we're going to right click here, select Tank. Now we're going to select a junction. Okay, right click, select done. Now left click. If you'd like to add a bend, you can right click, select bend. And when you're ready, right click again, select junction to place that junction. When you're done, click right click and done. Now we'll get J7 connected to J4 and click done. And finally, from J5 and done. When you're done, Notice that there is a dot near your cursor. You can click um, Escape or select this arrow. And we're going to place another bend here we forgot. So you can select that pipe, right click, and add bend. So if you'd like to be more precise, you can do that. All right, we're going to save and enter some properties. So we'll start with P1, the pipe that connects the tank. We're going to make sure that we change the length. So we'll set the has user defined length to true and set it to 450 feet. Okay, we're also going to modify the tank levels. So make sure your operating range type is elevation and set the following, 650, minimum level. The simulation would start with a water level of 665 and the maximum elevation is 680. Also make sure you set the diameter to 50 feet. 
Okay, when we're done, we would have set the hydraulic grade for our network because the tank is our source. We also need to input elevation for all our nodes. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the flex tables and select junction. Here we're going to sort labels ascending and input the information given in the table. All right, we can close this. We're getting ready to run our model. We need to input demand information. So we'll go to components, demand center, demand control center. We'll click yes here. Go to new and initialize demands for all elements. And all our, our nodes, we're going to assign 20 gallons per minute of demand. Once you have that, go ahead and close. And we're ready to validate. So we'll go to analysis, validate. No problems were found. Go ahead and compute. We had nine nodes with 20 gallons per minute demand each. And you can see that the total demand is 180. Now to view the results, we're going to go to the flex tables and we'll take a look at the pipe table as well as the junction table. And we'll use this information to complete the table at the end of the workshop. So enter these results in the run one column. For example, pressure at J1 is 19, at J6, 36, hydraulic grade line, at J5 is 663, and for our pipes, we're asked about the velocity, flow, you could also sort this ascending to make it easier to look up your results, and also the head loss gradient. To change the units, you can right click and select the requested units. We can even reduce the number of decimals. In addition to looking at results in these tables, we can look at the results directly in the drawing. So I'm going to turn the background off or actually make it more transparent. So we still get to see what's underneath. And we're going to use annotation for our pipes and our junctions. So right click in the pipe and go ahead and do new annotation. We're going to annotate our pipes by velocity and our junctions by pressure. So we'll select results, velocity, and we'll offset this a little bit. You can play with these offsetting values. If you'd like to see it a little further, go ahead and change that number. Okay. And we'll do the same for our junctions. So right click, new annotation. And we will select the results and pressure. We are now going to simulate a 1000 gallon per minute flow, which is a fire flow at J6. So to do that, we're going to create a new demand alternative. So go to Analysis Alternatives, right click Base Demand and add a new child alternative. Okay, once you've renamed it, double click and locate J6 and overwrite the demand to be 1000. When you do that, you will see this check mark indicating this is unique to that particular alternative. Go ahead and close that. And we're going to create a new scenario. So right click base and do new child scenario. And we'll call it Fireflow at J6. Now double click on that scenario and select the new demand alternative. And now we're ready to compute. So we will go back to scenarios, select Fireflow at J6 and make that the current scenario. 
can see the red arrow indicating that's the current scenario, which also is reflected here. Go ahead and compute. Now we have greater demand, and we also have a message saying the pressures are below the lowest physical possible pressure. You can see minus 22. So we can see that those six inch diameters are not sufficient for this network. So go ahead and review the results for the pipe flex table and the junction flex table. And you can use these values for that table at the end of the workshop. Okay, we have determined that those pipe diameters are not sufficient to carry our flow. Let's take a look at how the water gets to J6. So we know our source is the tank. Minimize this for a little bit. So notice the path that the water takes to get to here. It goes that direction, but some flow also comes through P7 and P9. So what we'll attempt to do in the next, next scenario is increase one of the ways that water can get to J6. So we'll increase the diameters for P6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, the best way to do that is to create a new physical alternative. So go to your alternatives, right click base physical and create a new child alternative. We'll name it new diameters. Okay, double click new diameters, sort the labels ascending and modify the diameters as shown on the table. Okay, make sure you've entered the right numbers. And when you're done checking close, we're going to create a new scenario. So go to your scenarios, right click base scenario and create a new child scenario. We'll name it fire flow with new diameters. Double click that and make sure that you're using the fire flow at J6 demand with the new diameters physical alternative. Now make sure that's the current scenario. Validate. If no problems are found, compute. Let me turn on the velocity and pressure. You get to see the pressure here. Review the results again in the junction and pipe tables. And enter this information for run three in the workshop tables. Let's answer the questions at the end of the workshop. The first question asks, why is the pressure so high at J9, even though it is far from the source? So we know our source is tank. T1, and the pressure is highest at J9. Notice that the elevation of J9 is 490 feet, whereas all the other nodes have a higher elevation. So because that's the lowest point in our system, J9 also has the highest pressure. Question two, why do we have to rely on pipes greater than six inch in this very small system. Well, we saw that the only way we can get water to J6 is through this run here, and then P7 and P9. If we had a bigger distribution system with more sources and more connections, those loops would help us get the water um, easier to J6. Question three asks, what would happen if we had the scenario for run two, where we have the small pipe diameters and the large demand at J6. Notice that you did get a minus 22 PSI, that's less than uh, the vapor pressure, so you really wouldn't be able to get that. 
what you would have in real life would be a much lower flow and slightly higher pressures. Okay, and the final question asks about flow difference between P3 and P7 for the last two scenarios. I'm going to create another annotation for flow so we can see these better. And notice that for the first scenario, we have 552 and 568 when they are both six inch diameter. Now, when we increase the diameter, there is more capacity for carrying flow on P3, which is now eight inch in diameter. Thus, we see higher flows in these pipes. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.